The Good News According to Luke Chapter 1 Whereas many have undertaken to compile a statement of the facts that are given full credence among us, just as those who from the beginning became eyewitnesses and attendants of the message delivered these to us, I resolved also, because I have traced all things from the start with accuracy, to write them in logical order to you, most excellent Theophilus, that you may know fully the certainty of the things that you have been taught orally. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there happened to be a certain priest named Zechariah of the division of Abijah. And he had a wife from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. They both were righteous before God because of walking blamelessly in accord with all the commandments and legal requirements of Jehovah. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and they both were well along in years. Now as he was acting as priest in the assignment of his division before God, according to the solemn practice of the priestly office, it became his turn to offer incense when he entered into the sanctuary of Jehovah. And all the multitude of the people was praying outside at the hour of offering incense. To him, Jehovah's angel appeared, standing at the right side of the incense altar. But Zechariah became troubled at the sight, and fear fell upon him. However, the angel said to him, Have no fear, Zechariah, because your supplication has been favorably heard and your wife Elizabeth will become mother to a son to you, and you are to call his name John. And you will have joy and great gladness, and many will rejoice over his birth, for he will be great before Jehovah. But he must drink no wine and strong drink at all, and he will be filled with Holy Spirit right from his mother's womb. And many of the sons of Israel will he turn back to Jehovah their God. Also, he will go before him with Elijah's spirit and power to turn back the hearts of fathers to children and the disobedient ones to the practical wisdom of righteous ones to get ready for Jehovah a prepared people. And Zechariah said to the angel, How am I to be sure of this? For I am aged and my wife is well along in years. In reply, the angel said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands near before God, and I was sent forth to speak with you and declare the good news of these things to you. But look, you will be silent and not able to speak until the day that these things take place, because you did not believe my words which will be fulfilled in their appointed time. Meanwhile, the people continued waiting for Zechariah, and they began to wonder at his delaying in the sanctuary. But when he came out, he was not able to speak to them, and they perceived that he had just seen a supernatural sight in the sanctuary, and he kept making signs to them, but remained dumb. When now the days of his public service were fulfilled, he went off to his home. But after these days, Elizabeth his wife became pregnant, and she kept herself secluded for five months, saying, This is the way Jehovah has dealt with me in these days, when he has given me his attention to take away my reproach among men. In her sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent forth from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin promised in marriage to a man named Joseph of David's house. And the name of the virgin was Mary. And when he went in before her, he said, Good day, highly favored one. Jehovah is with you. 
But she was deeply disturbed at the saying, and began to reason out what sort of greeting this might be. So the angel said to her, Have no fear, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And look, you will conceive in your womb and give birth to a son, and you are to call his name Jesus. This one will be great, and will be called Son of the Most High. And Jehovah God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule as king over the house of Jacob forever, and there will be no end of his kingdom. But Mary said to the angel, How is this to be, since I am having no intercourse with a man? In answer the angel said to her, Holy Spirit will come upon you, and power of the Most High will overshadow you. For that reason also what is born will be called holy, God's Son. And look, Elizabeth, your relative, has also herself conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her, the so-called barren woman. Because with God no declaration will be an impossibility. Then Mary said, Look, Jehovah's slave girl, may it take place with me according to your declaration. At that the angel departed from her. So Mary rose in these days and went into the mountainous country with haste to a city of Judah, and she entered into the home of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. Well, as Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the infant in her womb leaped, and Elizabeth was filled with Holy Spirit. And she called out with a loud cry and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. So how is it that this privilege is mine, to have the mother of my Lord come to me? For look, as the sound of your greeting fell upon my ears, the infant in my womb leaped with great gladness. Happy too is she that believed, because there will be a complete performance of those things spoken to her from Jehovah. And Mary said, My soul magnifies Jehovah, and my spirit cannot keep from being overjoyed at God my Savior because he has looked upon the low position of his slave girl. For look, from now on all generations will pronounce me happy, because the powerful one has done great deeds for me, and holy is his name. And for generations after generations, his mercy is upon those who fear him. He has performed mightily with his arm, he has scattered abroad those who are haughty in the intention of their hearts. He has brought down men of power from thrones and exalted lowly ones. He has fully satisfied hungry ones with good things, and he has sent away empty those who had wealth. He has come to the aid of Israel his servant to call to mind mercy, just as he told to our forefathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. Then Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her own home. The time now became due for Elizabeth to give birth, and she became mother to a son. And the neighbors and her relatives heard that Jehovah had magnified his mercy to her, and they began to rejoice with her. And on the eighth day, they came to circumcise the young child, and they were going to call it by the name of its father, Zechariah. But its mother answered and said, No, indeed, but he shall be called John. At this they said to her, There is no one among your relatives that is called by this name. Then they went asking its father by signs what he wanted it to be called. And he asked for a tablet, and wrote, John is its name. At this they all marveled. Instantly his mouth was opened, and his tongue loosed, and he began to speak, blessing God. 
and fear fell upon all those living in their neighborhood. And in the whole mountainous country of Judea, all these things began to be talked around, and all that heard made note of it in their hearts, saying, What really will this young child be? For the hand of Jehovah was indeed with it. And Zechariah, its father, was filled with Holy Spirit, and he prophesied, saying, Blessed be Jehovah, the God of Israel, because he has turned his attention and performed deliverance toward his people. And he has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of David, his servant, just as he, through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, has spoken of a salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all those hating us, to perform the mercy in connection with our forefathers and to call to mind his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to Abraham, our forefather, to grant us, after we have been rescued from the hands of enemies, the privilege of fearlessly rendering sacred service to him with loyalty and righteousness before him all our days. But as for you, young child, you will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go in advance before Jehovah to make his ways ready to give knowledge of salvation to his people by forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender compassion of our God. With this compassion, a daybreak will visit us from on high, to give light to those sitting in darkness and death's shadow, to direct our feet prosperously in the way of peace. And the young child went on growing and getting strong in spirit, and he continued in the deserts until the day of showing himself openly to Israel. Chapter 2 Now in those days a decree went forth from Caesar Augustus for all the inhabited earth to be registered. This first registration took place when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all people went traveling to be registered each one to his own city. Of course, Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to David's city, which is called Bethlehem, because of his being a member of the house and family of David, to get registered with Mary, who had been given him in marriage as promised, at present heavy with child. While they were there, the days came to the full for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her son, the firstborn. And she bound him with cloth bands and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the lodging room. There were also in that same country shepherds living out of doors and keeping watches in the night over their flocks. And suddenly Jehovah's angel stood by them, and Jehovah's glory gleamed around them and they became very fearful. But the angel said to them, Have no fear, for look, I am declaring to you good news of a great joy that all the people will have, because there was born to you today a Savior, who is Christ the Lord in David's city. And this is a sign for you. You will find an infant bound in cloth bands and lying in a manger. And suddenly there came to be with the angel a multitude of the heavenly army, praising God and saying, Glory in the heights above to God, and upon earth peace among men of good will. So when the angels had departed from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let us by all means go clear to Bethlehem, and see this thing that has taken place, which Jehovah has made known to us. And they went with haste, and found Mary as well as Joseph, and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw it, they made known the saying that had been spoken to them concerning this young child. And all that heard marveled over the things told them by the shepherds. But Mary began to preserve all these sayings, drawing conclusions in her heart. Then the shepherds went back, 
glorifying and praising God for all the things they heard and saw, just as these had been told them. Now when eight days came to the full for circumcising him, his name was also called Jesus, the name called by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Also, when the days for purifying them according to the law of Moses came to the full, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to Jehovah, just as it is written in Jehovah's law. Every male opening a womb must be called holy to Jehovah, and to offer sacrifice according to what is said in the law of Jehovah, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And look, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon, and this man was righteous and reverent, waiting for Israel's consolation, and Holy Spirit was upon him. Furthermore, it had been divinely revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Christ of Jehovah. Unto the power of the Spirit he now came into the temple, and as the parents brought the young child Jesus in to do for it according to the customary practice of the law, he himself received it into his arms and blessed God and said, Now, Sovereign Lord, you are letting your slave go free in peace according to your declaration, because my eyes have seen your means of saving, that you have made ready in the sight of all the peoples a light for removing the veil from the nations, and a glory of your people Israel. And its father and mother continued wondering at the things being spoken about it. Also Simeon blessed them, but said to Mary its mother, Look, this one is laid for the fall and the rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign to be talked against. Yes, a long sword will be run through the soul of you yourself, in order that the reasonings of many hearts may be uncovered. Now there was Anna, a prophetess, Phanuel's daughter, of Asher's tribe. This woman was well along in years, and had lived with the husband for seven years from her virginity, and she was a widow now, eighty-four years old who was never missing from the temple, rendering sacred service night and day with fastings and supplications. And in that very hour she came near and began returning thanks to God, and speaking about the child to all those waiting for Jerusalem's deliverance. So when they had carried out all the things according to the law of Jehovah, they went back into Galilee to their own city Nazareth. And the young child continued growing and getting strong, being filled with wisdom, and God's favor continued upon him. Now his parents were accustomed to go from year to year to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he became twelve years old, they went up according to the custom of the festival and completed the days. But when they were returning, the boy Jesus remained behind in Jerusalem, and his parents did not notice it. Assuming that he was in the company traveling together, they covered a day's distance, and then began to hunt him up among the relatives and acquaintances. But not finding him, they returned to Jerusalem, making a diligent search for him. Well, after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers and listening to them and questioning them. But all those listening to him were in constant amazement at his understanding and his answers. Now when they saw him, they were astounded. And his mother said to him, Child, why did you treat us this way? Here your father and I in mental distress have been looking for you. But he said to them, Why did you have to go looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in the house of my father? However, they did not grasp the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth, and he continued subject to them. Also his mother carefully kept all these sayings in her heart. 
and Jesus went on progressing in wisdom and in physical growth and in favor with God and men. Chapter 3 In the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was district ruler of Galilee, but Philip his brother was district ruler of the country of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Lysanias was district ruler of Abilene, in the days of chief priest Annas and of Caiaphas, God's declaration came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. So he came into all the country around the Jordan, preaching baptism in symbol of repentance for forgiveness of sins, just as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet. Listen, someone is crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of Jehovah, you people. Make his road straight. Every gully must be filled up, and every mountain and hill leveled down, and the curves must become straight ways, and the rough places smooth ways, and all flesh will see the saving means of God. Therefore he began to say to the crowds coming out to be baptized by him, You offspring of vipers, who has intimated to you to flee from the coming wrath? Therefore produce fruits that befit repentance. And do not start saying within yourselves, As a father we have Abraham. For I say to you that God has power to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Indeed, the axe is already in position at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, not producing fine fruit, is to be cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds would ask him, What then shall we do? In reply he would say to them, Let the man that has two undergarments share with the man that has none, and let him that has things to eat do the same. But even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they said to him, Teacher, what shall we do? He said to them, Do not demand anything more than the tax rate. Also, those in military service would ask him, What shall we also do? And he said to them, Do not harass anybody, or accuse anybody falsely, but be satisfied with your provisions. Now as the people were in expectation, and all were reasoning in their hearts about John, may he perhaps be the Christ? John gave the answer, saying to all, I, for my part, baptize you with water. But the one stronger than I am is coming, the lace of whose sandals I am not fit to untie. He will baptize you people with Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing shovel is in his hand to clean up his threshing floor completely and to gather the wheat into his storehouse, but the chaff he will burn up with fire that cannot be put out. Therefore he also gave many other exhortations and continued declaring good news to the people. But Herod the district ruler, for being reproved by him concerning Herodias the wife of his brother, and concerning all the wicked deeds that Herod did, added also this to all those deeds he locked John up in prison. Now when all the people were baptized, Jesus also was baptized. And as he was praying, the heaven was opened up, and the Holy Spirit in bodily shape like a dove came down upon him, and a voice came out of heaven. You are my son, the beloved. I have approved you. Furthermore, Jesus himself, when he commenced his work, was about thirty years old, being the son, as the opinion was, of Joseph, son of Heli, son of Matthet, son of Levi, son of Melchi, son of Janai, son of Joseph, 
son of Mattathias, son of Amos, son of Nahum, son of Esli, son of Nagai, son of Mahath, son of Mattathias, son of Semyon, son of Josek, son of Joda, son of Joannan, son of Resa, son of Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, son of Neri, son of Melchi, son of Adai, son of Kosam, son of Elmadam, son of Ur, son of Jesus, son of Eliezer, son of Joram, son of Mathet, son of Levi, son of Simeon, son of Judas, son of Joseph, son of Jonam, son of Eliakim, son of Melia, son of Mena, son of Mattatha, son of Nathan, son of David, son of Jesse, son of Obed, son of Boaz, son of Salmon, son of Noshan, son of Aminadab, son of Arnai, son of Hezron, son of Perez, son of Judah, son of Jacob, son of Isaac, son of Abraham, son of Terah, son of Nahor, son of Serug, son of Reu, son of Peleg, son of Eber, son of Shelah, son of Cainan, son of Arpachshad, son of Shem, son of Noah, son of Lamech, son of Methuselah, son of Enoch, son of Jared, son of Mahalaleel, son of Cainan, son of Enosh, son of Seth, son of Adam, son of God. Chapter 4 Now Jesus, full of Holy Spirit, turned away from the Jordan, and he was led about by the Spirit in the wilderness for forty days, while being tempted by the devil. Furthermore, he ate nothing in those days, and so, when they were concluded, he felt hungry. At this the devil said to him, If you are a son of God, tell this stone to become a loaf of bread. But Jesus replied to him, It is written, Man must not live by bread alone. So he brought him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the inhabited earth in an instant of time. And the devil said to him, I will give you all this authority and the glory of them, because it has been delivered to me, and to whomever I wish I give it. You therefore, if you do an act of worship before me, it will all be yours. In reply, Jesus said to him, It is written, It is Jehovah your God you must worship, and it is to him alone you must render sacred service. Now he led him into Jerusalem, and stationed him upon the battlement of the temple, and said to him, If you are a son of God, hurl yourself down from here, for it is written, he will give his angels a charge concerning you to preserve you. And they will carry you on their hands, that you may at no time strike your foot against a stone. In answer, Jesus said to him, It is said, You must not put Jehovah your God to the test. So the devil, having concluded all the temptation, retired from him until another convenient time. Now Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and good talk concerning him spread out through all the surrounding country. Also, he began to teach in their synagogues, being held in honor by all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been reared, and, according to his custom on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue, and he stood up to read. So the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed him, and he opened the scroll and found the place where it was written, Jehovah's Spirit is upon me, because he anointed me to declare good news to the poor. He sent me forth to preach a release to the captives and a recovery of sight to the blind, 
to send the crushed ones away with a release to preach Jehovah's acceptable year. With that, he rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the attendant, and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were intently fixed upon him. Then he started to say to them, Today this scripture that you just heard is fulfilled. And they all began to give favorable witness about him and to marvel at the winsome words proceeding out of his mouth. And they were saying, This is a son of Joseph, is it not? At this he said to them, No doubt you will apply this illustration to me. Physician, cure yourself. The things we heard as having happened in Capernaum do also here in your home territory. But he said, Truly I tell you that no prophet is accepted in his home territory. For instance, I tell you in truth, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, so that a great famine fell upon all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of those women, but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon to a widow. Also, there were many lepers in Israel in the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed but Naaman the man of Syria. Now all those hearing these things in the synagogue became filled with anger, and they rose up and hurried him outside the city, and they led him to the brow of the mountain upon which their city had been built, in order to throw him down headlong. But he went through the midst of them and continued on his way. And he went down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee. And he was teaching them on the Sabbath. And they were astounded at his way of teaching, because his speech was with authority. Now in the synagogue there was a man with a spirit, an unclean demon, and he shouted with a loud voice, Ah! What have we to do with you, Jesus, you Nazarene? Did you come to destroy us? I know exactly who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked it, saying, Be silent, and come out of him. So after throwing the man down in their midst, the demon came out of him without hurting him. At this, astonishment fell upon all, and they began to converse with one another, saying, What sort of speech is this? Because with authority and power he orders the unclean spirits, and out they come. So the news concerning him kept going out into every corner of the surrounding country. After getting up out of the synagogue, he entered into Simon's home. Now Simon's mother-in-law was distressed with a high fever, and they made request of him for her. So he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. Instantly she rose and began ministering to them. But when the sun was setting, all those who had people sick with various diseases brought them to him. By laying his hands upon each one of them, he would cure them. Demons also would come out of many, crying out and saying, You are the Son of God. But rebuking them, he would not permit them to speak, because they knew him to be the Christ. However, when it became day, he went out and proceeded to a lonely place. But the crowds began hunting about for him, and came out as far as he was, and they tried to detain him from going away from them. But he said to them, Also to other cities I must declare the good news of the kingdom of God, because for this I was sent forth. Accordingly he went on preaching in the synagogues of Judea. Chapter 5 on an occasion when the crowd was pressing close upon him and listening to the word of God, he was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats docked at the lakeside, 
but the fishermen had got out of them and were washing off their nets. Going aboard one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to pull away a bit from land. Then he sat down, and from the boat he began teaching the crowds. When he ceased speaking, he said to Simon, Pull out to where it is deep, and you men let down your nets for a catch. But Simon in reply said, Instructor, for a whole night we toiled and took nothing, but at your bidding I will lower the nets. Well, when they did this, they enclosed a great multitude of fish. In fact, their nets began ripping apart. So they motioned to their partners in the other boat to come and assist them. And they did come, and they filled both boats, so that these began to sink. Seeing this, Simon Peter fell down at the knees of Jesus, saying, Depart from me, because I am a sinful man, Lord. For at the catch of fish which they took up, astonishment overwhelmed him, and all those with him, and likewise both James and John, Zebedee's sons, who were sharers with Simon. But Jesus said to Simon, Stop being afraid. From now on you will be catching men alive. So they brought the boats back to land, and abandoned everything, and followed him. On a further occasion, while he was in one of the cities, look, a man full of leprosy. When he caught sight of Jesus, he fell upon his face and begged him, saying, Lord, if you just want to, you can make me clean. And so, stretching out his hand, he touched him, saying, I want to be made clean. And immediately the leprosy vanished from him, and he gave the man orders to tell nobody, but go off and show yourself to the priest, and make an offering in connection with your cleansing, just as Moses directed, for a witness to them. But the word about him was spreading the more, and great crowds would come together to listen and to be cured of their sicknesses. However, he continued in retirement in the deserts and praying. In the course of one of the days he was teaching, and Pharisees and teachers of the law who had come out of every village of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem were sitting there, and Jehovah's power was there for him to do healing. And look, men carrying on a bed a man who was paralyzed and they were seeking a way to bring him in and place him before him. So, not finding a way to bring him in on account of the crowd, they climbed up to the roof, and through the tiling they let him down with the little bed among those in front of Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said, Man, your sins are forgiven you. Thereupon the scribes and the Pharisees started to reason, saying, Who is this that is speaking blasphemies? Who can forgive sins except God alone? But Jesus, discerning their reasonings, said in answer to them, What are you reasoning out in your hearts? Which is easier, to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, get up and walk. But in order for you to know that the Son of Man has authority on the earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralyzed man, I say to you, get up and pick up your little bed and be on your way home. And instantly he rose up before them, picked up what he used to lie on, and went off to his home, glorifying God. Then an ecstasy seized one and all, and they began to glorify God, and they became filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. Now after these things he went out and beheld a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax office, and he said to him, Be my follower. 
and leaving everything behind, he rose up and went following him. Also, Levi spread a big reception feast for him in his house. And there was a great crowd of tax collectors and others who were with them reclining at the meal. At this, the Pharisees and their scribes began murmuring to his disciples, saying, Why is it you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? In reply, Jesus said to them, Those who are healthy do not need a physician, but those who are ailing do. I have come to call not righteous persons, but sinners to repentance. They said to him, The disciples of John fast frequently and offer supplications, and so do those of the Pharisees, but yours eat and drink. Jesus said to them, You cannot make the friends of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them, can you? Yet days will come when the bridegroom will indeed be taken away from them. Then they will fast in those days. Further, he went on to give an illustration to them. No one cuts a patch from a new outer garment and sews it onto an old outer garment. But if he does, then both the new patch tears away and the patch from the new garment does not match the old. Moreover, no one puts new wine into old wineskins. But if he does, then the new wine will burst the wineskins, and it will be spilled out, and the wineskins will be ruined. But new wine must be put into new wineskins. No one that has drunk old wine wants new, for he says, The old is nice. Chapter 6 Now on a Sabbath he happened to be passing through grain fields, and his disciples were plucking and eating the heads of grain, rubbing them with their hands. At this some of the Pharisees said, Why are you doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? But Jesus said in reply to them, Have you never read the very thing David did? when he and the men with him got hungry? How he entered into the house of God and received the loaves of presentation and ate and gave some to the men with him, which it is lawful for no one to eat but for the priests only? And he went on to say to them, Lord of the Sabbath is what the Son of Man is. In the course of another Sabbath, he entered into the synagogue and began teaching. And there was a man present whose right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees were now watching him closely to see whether he would cure on the Sabbath in order to find some way to accuse him. He, however, knew their reasonings. Yet he said to the man with the withered hand, Get up! and stand in the center. And he rose and took his stand. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you men, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do injury, to save or to destroy a soul? And after looking around at them all, he said to the man, stretch out your hand. He did so and his hand was restored. But they became filled with madness, and they began to talk over with one another what they might do to Jesus. In the progress of these days, he went out into the mountain to pray, and he continued the whole night in prayer to God. But when it became day, he called his disciples to him, and chose from among them twelve whom he also named Apostles, Simon, whom he also named Peter, and Andrew his brother, and James and John, and Philip and Bartholomew, and Matthew and Thomas, and James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon who is called the Zealous One, and Judas the son of James, 
and Judas Iscariot, who turned traitor. And he came down with them and took his station on a level place, and there was a great crowd of his disciples, and a great multitude of people from all of Judea and Jerusalem, and the maritime country of Tyre and Sidon, who came to hear him and be healed of their sicknesses. Even those troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all the crowd were seeking to touch him, because power was going out of him and healing them all. And he lifted up his eyes upon his disciples and began to say, Happy are you poor, because yours is the kingdom of God. Happy are you who hunger now, because you will be filled. Happy are you who weep now, because you will laugh. Happy are you whenever men hate you, and whenever they exclude you, and reproach you, and cast out your name as wicked for the sake of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap, for look, your reward is great in heaven, for those are the same things their forefathers used to do to the prophets. But woe to you rich persons, because you are having your consolation in full. Woe to you who are filled up now, because you will go hungry. Woe, you who are laughing now, because you will mourn and weep. Woe, whenever all men speak well of you, for things like these are what their forefathers did to the false prophets. But I say to you who are listening, continue to love your enemies, to do good to those hating you, to bless those cursing you, to pray for those who are insulting you. To him that strikes you on the one cheek, offer the other also. And from him that takes away your outer garment, do not withhold even the undergarment. Give to everyone asking you, and from the one taking your things away, do not ask them back. Also, just as you want men to do to you, do the same way to them. And if you love those loving you, of what credit is it to you? For even the sinners love those loving them. And if you do good to those doing good to you, really of what credit is it to you? Even the sinners do the same. Also, if you lend without interest to those from whom you hope to receive, of what credit is it to you? Even sinners lend without interest to sinners that they may get back as much. To the contrary, continue to love your enemies and to do good and to lend without interest, not hoping for anything back, and your reward will be great and you will be sons of the Most High because he is kind toward the unthankful and wicked. Continue becoming merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Moreover, stop judging, and you will by no means be judged, and stop condemning, and you will by no means be condemned. Keep on releasing, and you will be released. Practice giving and people will give to you. They will pour into your laps a fine measure, pressed down, shaken together, and overflowing. For with the measure that you are measuring out, they will measure out to you in return. Then he also spoke an illustration to them. A blind man cannot guide a blind man, can he? Both will tumble into a pit, will they not? A pupil is not above his teacher, but everyone that is perfectly instructed will be like his teacher. Why then do you look at the straw that is in your brother's eye, but do not observe the rafter that is in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, Brother, allow me to extract the straw that is in your eye? while you yourself are not looking at the rafter in that eye of yours. Hypocrite!
first extract the rafter from your own eye, and then you will see clearly how to extract the straw that is in your brother's eye. For there is not a fine tree producing rotten fruit. Again, there is not a rotten tree producing fine fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. For example, people do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they cut grapes off a thorn bush. A good man brings forth good out of the good treasure of his heart. But a wicked man brings forth what is wicked out of his wicked treasure. For out of the heart's abundance his mouth speaks. Why then do you call me Lord, Lord, but do not do the things I say? Everyone that comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house, who dug and went down deep and laid a foundation upon the rock mass. Consequently, when a flood arose, the river dashed against that house, but was not strong enough to shake it because of its being well built. On the other hand, he who hears and does not do is like a man who built a house upon the ground without a foundation. Against it the river dashed, and immediately it collapsed, and the ruin of that house became great. Chapter 7 When he had completed all his sayings and the hearing of the people, he entered into Capernaum. Now a certain army officer's slave, who was dear to him, was ailing and was about to pass away. When he heard about Jesus, he sent forth older men of the Jews to him, to ask him to come and bring his slave safely through. Then those that came up to Jesus began to entreat him earnestly, saying, He is worthy of your conferring this upon him, for he loves our nation, and he himself built the synagogue for us. So Jesus started off with them. But when he was not far from the house, the army officer had already sent friends to say to him, Sir, do not bother for I am not fit to have you come in under my roof. For that reason, I did not consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word, and let my servant be healed. For I too am a man placed under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, Be on your way, and he is on his way. And to another, Come, and he comes and to my slave, do this, and he does it. Well, when Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him, and he turned to the crowd following him and said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found so great a faith. And those that had been sent on getting back to the house found the slave in good health. Closely following this, he traveled to a city called Nain, and his disciples and a great crowd were traveling with him. As he got near the gate of the city, why, look, there was a dead man being carried out, the only begotten son of his mother. Besides, she was a widow. A considerable crowd from the city was also with her. And when the Lord caught sight of her, he was moved with pity for her. And he said to her, Stop weeping. With that he approached and touched the bier, and the bearer stood still, and he said, Young man, I say to you, Get up. And the dead man sat up and started to speak, and he gave him to his mother. Now fear seized them all, and they began to glorify God, saying, A great prophet has been raised up among us, and God has turned his attention to his people. 
And this news concerning him spread out into all Judea and all the surrounding country. Now John's disciples reported to him about all these things. So John summoned a certain two of his disciples and sent them to the Lord to say, Are you the coming one, or are we to expect a different one? When they came up to him, the men said, John the Baptist dispatched us to you to say, Are you the coming one, or are we to expect another? In that hour he cured many of sicknesses and grievous diseases and wicked spirits, and granted many blind persons the favor of seeing. Hence in answer he said to the two, Go your way. Report to John what you saw and heard. The blind are receiving sight, the lame are walking, the lepers are being cleansed, and the deaf are hearing. The dead are being raised up, the poor are being told the good news. And happy is he who is not stumbled over me. When the messengers of John had gone away, he started to say to the crowds concerning John, what did you go out into the wilderness to behold? A reed being tossed by the wind? What then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft outer garments? Why, those in splendid dress and existing in luxury are in royal houses. Really then, what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and far more than a prophet. This is he concerning whom it is written, Look, I am sending forth my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way ahead of you. I tell you, among those born of women there is none greater than John, but a person that is a lesser one in the kingdom of God is greater than he is. And all the people and the tax collectors, when they heard this, declared God to be righteous, they having been baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and those versed in the law disregarded the counsel of God to them, they not having been baptized by him. With whom, therefore, shall I compare the men of this generation, and whom are they like? They are like young children sitting in a marketplace and crying out to one another, and who say, We played the flute for you, but you did not dance. We wailed, but you did not weep. Correspondingly, John the Baptist has come neither eating bread nor drinking wine, but you say he has a demon. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, but you say, Look! a man gluttonous and given to drinking wine, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. All the same, wisdom is proved righteous by all its children. Now a certain one of the Pharisees kept asking him to dine with him. Accordingly, he entered into the house of the Pharisee and reclined at the table. And look, a woman who was known in the city to be a sinner learned that he was reclining at a meal in the house of the Pharisee, and she brought an alabaster case of perfumed oil, and, taking a position behind at his feet, she wept, and started to wet his feet with her tears, and she would wipe them off with the hair of her head. Also, she tenderly kissed his feet, and greased them with the perfumed oil. At the sight, the Pharisee that invited him said within himself, This man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what kind of woman it is that is touching him, that she is a sinner. But in reply Jesus said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. He said, Teacher, Say it. Two men were debtors to a certain lender. The one was in debt for five hundred denarii, but the other for fifty. When they did not have anything with which to pay back, 
he freely forgave them both. Therefore, which of them will love him the more? In answer, Simon said, I suppose it is the one to whom he freely forgave the more. He said to him, You judge correctly. With that he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you behold this woman? I entered into your house. You gave me no water for my feet. But this woman wet my feet with her tears and wiped them off with her hair. You gave me no kiss. But this woman, from the hour that I came in, did not leave off tenderly kissing my feet. You did not grease my head with oil, but this woman greased my feet with perfumed oil. By virtue of this, I tell you, her sins, many though they are, are forgiven, because she loved much. But he who is forgiven little, loves little. Then he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. At this, those reclining at the table with him started to say within themselves, Who is this man who even forgives sins? But he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go your way in peace. Chapter 8 Shortly afterwards, he went journeying from city to city and from village to village, preaching and declaring the good news of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him, and certain women that had been cured of wicked spirits and sicknesses, Mary the so-called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out, and Joanna, the wife of Cusa, Herod's man in charge, and Susanna, and many other women who were ministering to them from their belongings. Now when a great crowd had collected together with those that went to him from city after city, he spoke by means of an illustration. A sower went out to sow his seed. Well, as he was sowing, some of it fell alongside the road and was trampled down, and the birds of heaven ate it up. Some other landed upon the rock mass, and, after sprouting, it dried up because of not having moisture. Some other fell among the thorns, and the thorns that grew up with it choked it off. Some other fell upon the good soil, and, after sprouting, it produced fruit a hundredfold. As he told these things, he proceeded to call out, let him that has ears to listen, listen. But his disciples began to ask him what this illustration might mean. He said, To you it is granted to understand the sacred secrets of the kingdom of God. But for the rest, it is in illustrations, in order that, though looking, they may look in vain, and though hearing, they may not get the meaning. Now the illustration means this. The seed is the word of God. Those alongside the road are the ones that have heard. Then the devil comes and takes the word away from their hearts in order that they may not believe and be saved. Those upon the rock mass are the ones who, when they hear it, receive the word with joy, but these have no root. They believe for a season, but in a season of testing they fall away. As for that which fell among the thorns, these are the ones that have heard, but by being carried away by anxieties and riches and pleasures of this life, they are completely choked and bring nothing to perfection. As for that on the fine soil, these are the ones that, after hearing the word with a fine and good heart, retain it and bear fruit with endurance. No one, after lighting a lamp, covers it with a vessel or puts it underneath a bed, but he puts it on a lampstand that those stepping in may behold the light. 
For there is nothing hidden that will not become manifest, neither anything carefully concealed that will never become known and never come into the open. Therefore, pay attention to how you listen. For whoever has, more will be given him. But whoever does not have, even what he imagines he has will be taken away from him. Now his mother and brothers came toward him, but they were unable to get to him because of the crowd. However, it was reported to him, Your mother and your brothers are standing outside wanting to see you. In reply he said to them, My mother and my brothers are these who hear the word of God and do it. In the course of one of the days, he and his disciples got into a boat, and he said to them, Let us cross to the other side of the lake. So they set sail. But as they were sailing, he fell asleep. Now a violent windstorm descended upon the lake, and they began to fill up with water and to be in danger. Finally they went to him and roused him, saying, Instructor, instructor, we are about to perish. Rousing himself, he rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they subsided, and a calm set in. Then he said to them, Where is your faith? But struck with fear, they marveled, saying to one another, Who really is this? for he orders even the winds and the water, and they obey him. And they put in to shore in the country of the Gerasenes, which is on the side opposite Galilee. But as he got out onto land, a certain man from the city who had demons met him. And for a considerable time he had not worn clothing, and he was staying not at home, but among the tombs. At the sight of Jesus, he cried aloud and fell down before him. And with a loud voice, he said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For he had been ordering the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For over a long time, it had held him fast, and he was repeatedly bound with chains and fetters under guard but he would burst the bonds and be driven by the demon into the lonely places. Jesus asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, because many demons had entered into him. And they kept entreating him not to order them to go away into the abyss. Now a herd of a considerable number of swine was feeding there on the mountain. So they entreated him to permit them to enter into those, and he gave them permission. Then the demons went out of the man and entered into the swine, and the herd rushed over the precipice into the lake and drowned. But when the herders saw what had happened, they fled and reported it to the city and to the countryside. Then people turned out to see what had happened. And they came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons came out, clothed and in his sound mind, sitting at the feet of Jesus. And they became fearful. Those who had seen it reported to them how the demon-possessed man had been made well. So all the multitude from the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked him to get away from them, because they were in the grip of great fear. Then he went aboard the boat and turned away. However, the man from whom the demons had gone out kept begging to continue with him. But he dismissed the man, saying, Be on your way back home, and keep on relating what things God did for you. Accordingly, he went away, proclaiming throughout the whole city what things Jesus did for him. When Jesus got back, the crowd received him kindly, for they were all expecting him. But look, a man named Jairus came, and this man was a presiding officer of the synagogue. And he fell at the feet of Jesus and began to entreat him to enter into his house. 
because he had an only begotten daughter about 12 years old, and she was dying. As he was going, the crowds thronged him. And a woman, subject to a flow of blood for 12 years, who had not been able to get a cure from anyone, approached from behind and touched the fringe of his outer garment, and instantly her flow of blood stopped. So Jesus said, Who was it that touched me? When they were all denying it, Peter said, Instructor, the crowds are hemming you in and closely pressing you. Yet Jesus said, Someone touched me, for I perceive that power went out of me. Seeing that she had not escaped notice, the woman came trembling and fell down before him and disclosed before all the people the cause for which she touched him and how she was healed instantly. But he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go your way in peace. While he was yet speaking, a certain representative of the presiding officer of the synagogue came, saying, Your daughter has died. Do not bother the teacher any longer. On hearing this, Jesus answered him, Have no fear. Only put forth faith, and she will be saved. When he reached the house, he did not let anyone go in with him, except Peter and John and James, and the girl's father and mother. But people were all weeping and beating themselves in grief for her. So he said, Stop weeping, for she did not die, but is sleeping. At this they began to laugh at him scornfully, because they knew she had died. But he took her by the hand and called, saying, Girl, get up. And her spirit returned, and she rose instantly, and he ordered something to be given her to eat. Well, her parents were beside themselves, but he instructed them to tell no one what had happened. Chapter 9 Then he called the twelve together, and gave them power and authority over all the demons and to cure sicknesses. And so he sent them forth to preach the kingdom of God and to heal. And he said to them, Carry nothing for the trip, neither staff nor food pouch, nor bread nor silver money, neither have two undergarments. But wherever you enter into a home, stay there and leave from there. And wherever people do not receive you, on going out of that city, shake the dust off your feet for a witness against them. Then starting out, they went through the territory, from village to village, declaring the good news and performing cures everywhere. Now Herod, the district ruler, heard of all the things happening, and he was in great perplexity because of its being said by some that John had been raised up from the dead but by others that Elijah had appeared, but by still others that a certain one of the ancient prophets had risen. Herod said, John I beheaded. Who then is this about whom I am hearing such things? So he was seeking to see him. And when the apostles returned, they recounted to him what things they had done. With that, he took them along and withdrew to privacy into a city called Bethsaida. But the crowds, getting to know it, followed him, and he received them kindly and began to speak to them about the kingdom of God, and he healed those needing a cure. Then the day started to decline. The twelve now came up and said to him, Dismiss the crowd, that they may go into the villages and countryside round about, and procure lodging and find provisions, because out here we are in a lonely place. But he said to them, You give them something to eat. They said, We have nothing more than five loaves and two fishes, 
unless perhaps we ourselves go and buy foodstuffs for all these people. They were, in fact, about 5,000 men. But he said to his disciples, Have them recline as at meals in groups of about 50 each. And they did so, and had them all recline. Then taking the five loaves and the two fishes, he looked up to heaven, blessed them, and broke them up, and began to give them to the disciples to set before the crowd. So they all ate and were satisfied, and the surplus that they had was taken up, twelve baskets of fragments. Later, while he was praying alone, the disciples came together to him, and he questioned them, saying, Who are the crowds saying that I am? In reply they said, John the Baptist, but others, Elijah, and still others, that one of the ancient prophets has risen. And he said to them, You, though, who do you say I am? Peter said in reply, The Christ of God. Then in a stern talk to them, he instructed them not to be telling this to anybody, but said, the Son of Man must undergo many sufferings and be rejected by the older men and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised up. Then he went on to say to all, If anyone wants to come after me, let him disown himself and pick up his torture stake day after day and follow me continually. For whoever wants to save his soul will lose it. But whoever loses his soul for my sake is the one that will save it. Really, what does a man benefit himself if he gains the whole world, but loses his own self or suffers damage? For whoever becomes ashamed of me and of my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of this one when he arrives in his glory and that of the Father and of the holy angels. But I tell you truthfully, there are some of those standing here that will not taste death at all until first they see the kingdom of God. In actual fact, about eight days after these words, he took Peter and John and James along and climbed up into the mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face became different, and his apparel became glitteringly white. Also, look, two men were conversing with him, who were Moses and Elijah. These appeared with glory and began talking about his departure that he was destined to fulfill at Jerusalem. Now Peter and those with him were weighed down with sleep. But when they got fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. And as these were being separated from him, Peter said to Jesus, Instructor, it is fine for us to be here. So let us erect three tents, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He not realizing what he was saying. But as he was saying these things, a cloud formed and began to overshadow them. As they entered into the cloud, they became fearful. And a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my Son, the one that has been chosen. Listen to him. And as the voice occurred, Jesus was found alone. But they kept quiet and did not report to anyone in those days any of the things they saw. On the succeeding day, when they got down from the mountain, a great crowd met him. And look, a man cried out from the crowd, saying, Teacher, I beg you to take a look at my son, because he is my only begotten. And look, a spirit takes him, and suddenly he cries out, and it throws him into convulsions with foam, and it scarcely withdraws from him after bruising him. 
and I begged your disciples to expel it, but they could not. In response, Jesus said, O oh, faithless and twisted generation, how long must I continue with you and put up with you? Lead your son over here. But even as he was approaching, the demon dashed him to the ground and violently convulsed him. However, Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the boy and delivered him to his father. Well, they all began to be astounded at the majestic power of God. Now as they were all marveling at all the things he was doing, he said to his disciples, Give lodgment to these words in your ears, for the Son of Man is destined to be delivered into the hands of men. But they continued without understanding of the saying. In fact, it was concealed from them that they might not see through it, and they were afraid to question him about the saying. Then a reasoning entered among them as to who would be the greatest of them. Jesus, knowing the reasoning of their hearts, took a young child, set it beside him, and said to them, Whoever receives this young child on the basis of my name receives me too. And whoever receives me receives him also that sent me forth. For he that conducts himself as a lesser one among all of you is the one that is great. In response, John said, Instructor, we saw a certain man expelling demons by the use of your name, and we tried to prevent him because he is not following with us. But Jesus said to him, Do not you men try to prevent him, for he that is not against you is for you. As the days were now coming to the full for him to be taken up, he firmly set his face to go to Jerusalem. So he sent forth messengers in advance of him, and they went their way and entered into a village of Samaritans to make preparation for him. But they did not receive him, because his face was set for going to Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to tell fire to come down from heaven and annihilate them? But he turned and rebuked them. So they went to a different village. Now as they were going on the road, someone said to him, I will follow you to wherever you may depart. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have dens, and birds of heaven have roosts, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay down his head. Then he said to another, Be my follower. The man said, Permit me first to leave and bury my father. But he said to him, Let the dead bury their dead, but you go away and declare abroad the kingdom of God. And still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first permit me to say goodbye to those in my household. Jesus said to him, No man that has put his hand to a plow and looks at the things behind is well fitted for the kingdom of God. Chapter 10 After these things the Lord designated seventy others, and sent them forth by twos in advance of him, into every city and place to which he himself was going to come. Then he began to say to them, The harvest indeed is great, but the workers are few. Therefore beg the master of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. Go forth. Look, I am sending you forth as lambs in among wolves. Do not carry a purse, nor a food pouch, nor sandals, and do not embrace anybody in greeting along the road. Wherever you enter into a house, say first, May this house have peace. 
And if a friend of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. But if there is not, it will turn back to you. So stay in that house, eating and drinking the things they provide, for the worker is worthy of his wages. Do not be transferring from house to house. Also, wherever you enter into a city and they receive you, eat the things set before you and cure the sick ones in it and go on telling them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But wherever you enter into a city and they do not receive you, go out into its broad ways and say, even the dust that got stuck to our feet from your city, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, keep this in mind, that the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you that it will be more endurable for Sodom in that day than for that city. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! Because if the powerful works that had taken place in you had taken place in Tyre and Sidon, they would long ago have repented sitting in sackcloth and ashes. Consequently, it will be more endurable for Tyre and Sidon in the judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you perhaps be exalted to heaven? Down to Hades you will come. He that listens to you listens to me too. And he that disregards you disregards me too. Moreover, he that disregards me disregards also him that sent me forth. Then the seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are made subject to us by the use of your name. At that he said to them, I began to behold Satan already fallen like lightning from heaven. Look, I have given you the authority to trample underfoot serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will by any means do you hurt. Nevertheless, do not rejoice over this, that the spirits are made subject to you, but rejoice because your names have been inscribed in the heavens. In that very hour he became overjoyed in the Holy Spirit and said, I publicly praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have carefully hidden these things from wise and intellectual ones and have revealed them to babes. Yes, O oh Father, because to do thus came to be the way approved by you. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and who the Son is no one knows but the Father, and who the Father is no one knows but the Son, and he to whom the Son is willing to reveal him. With that he turned to the disciples by themselves and said, Happy are the eyes that behold the things you are beholding. For I say to you, many prophets and kings desired to see the things you are beholding, but did not see them, and to hear the things you are hearing, but did not hear them. Now look, a certain man versed in the law rose up to test him out and said, Teacher, by doing what? shall I inherit everlasting life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read? In answer he said, You must love Jehovah your God with your whole heart, and with your whole soul, and with your whole strength, and with your whole mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He said to him, You answered correctly. Keep on doing this, and you will get life. But wanting to prove himself righteous, the man said to Jesus, Who really is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, A certain man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among robbers who both stripped him and inflicted blows and went off, leaving him half dead. Now. By coincidence, a certain priest was going down over that road, but, when
when he saw him, he went by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite also, when he got down to the place and saw him, went by on the opposite side. But a certain Samaritan traveling the road came upon him, and at seeing him, he was moved with pity. So he approached him and bound up his wounds, pouring oil and wine upon them. Then he mounted him upon his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and whatever you spend besides this, I will repay you when I come back here. Who of these three seems to you to have made himself neighbor to the man that fell among the robbers? He said, The one that acted mercifully toward him. Jesus then said to him, Go your way, and be doing the same yourself. Now as they were going their way, he entered into a certain village. Here a certain woman named Martha received him as guest into the house. This woman also had a sister called Mary, who, however, sat down at the feet of the Lord and kept listening to his word. Martha, on the other hand, was distracted with attending to many duties. So she came near and said, Lord, does it not matter to you that my sister has left me alone to attend to things? Tell her, therefore, to join in helping me. In answer, the Lord said to her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and disturbed about many things. A few things, though, are needed, or just one. For her part, Mary chose the good portion, and it will not be taken away from her. Chapter 11 Now on the occasion of his being in a certain place praying, when he stopped, a certain one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us how to pray, just as John also taught his disciples. Then he said to them, Whenever you pray, say, Father, let your name be sanctified. Let your kingdom come. Give us our bread for the day according to the day's requirement. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves also forgive everyone that is in debt to us. And do not bring us into temptation. Further he said to them, Who of you will have a friend, and will go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, loan me three loaves, because a friend of mine has just come to me on a journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And that one from inside says in reply, Quit making me trouble. The door is already locked, and my young children are with me in bed. I cannot rise up and give you anything. I tell you, although he will not rise up and give him anything because of being his friend, certainly because of his bold persistence, he will get up and give him what things he needs. Accordingly, I say to you, Keep on asking, and it will be given you. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and it will be opened to you. For everyone asking receives, and everyone seeking finds, and to everyone knocking it will be opened. Indeed, which father is there among you who, if his son asks for a fish, will perhaps hand him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he also asks for an egg, will hand him a scorpion? Therefore, if you, although being wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more so will the Father in heaven give Holy Spirit to those asking him? Later he was expelling a dumb demon. After the demon came out, the dumb man spoke. 
and the crowds marveled. But certain ones of them said, He expels the demons by means of Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. However, others, to tempt him, began seeking a sign out of heaven from him. Knowing their imaginations, he said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself comes to desolation, and a house divided against itself falls. So if Satan is also divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? Because you say I expel the demons by means of Beelzebub? If it is by means of Beelzebub I expel the demons, by whom do your sons expel them? Because of this, they will be judges of you. But if it is by means of God's finger I expel the demons, the kingdom of God has really overtaken you. When a strong man, well armed, guards his palace, his belongings continue in peace. But when someone stronger than he is comes against him and conquers him, he takes away his full armament in which he was trusting, and he divides out the things he despoiled him of. He that is not on my side is against me, and he that does not gather with me scatters. When an unclean spirit comes out of a man, it passes through parched places in search of a resting place, and, after finding none, it says, I will return to my house out of which I moved, and on arriving it finds it swept clean and adorned. Then it goes its way and takes along seven different spirits, more wicked than itself, and after getting inside they dwell there, and the final circumstances of that man become worse than the first. Now as he was saying these things, a certain woman out of the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Happy is the womb that carried you, and the breasts that you sucked. But he said, No, rather, happy are those hearing the word of God and keeping it. When the crowds were massing together, he started to say, This generation is a wicked generation. It looks for a sign, but no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah. For just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, in the same way will the Son of Man be also to this generation. The Queen of the South will be raised up in the judgment with the men of this generation, and will condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. But look, something more than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh will rise in the judgment with this generation and will condemn it, because they repented of what Jonah preached. But look, something more than Jonah is here. After lighting a lamp, a person puts it not in a vault nor under a measuring basket, but upon the lampstand, that those stepping in may behold the light. The lamp of the body is your eye. When your eye is simple, your whole body is also bright. But when it is wicked, your body is also dark. Be alert, therefore. Perhaps the light that is in you is darkness. Therefore, if your whole body is bright, with no part at all dark, it will all be as bright as when a lamp gives you light by its rays. When he had spoken this, a Pharisee requested him to dine with him. So he went in and reclined at the table. However, the Pharisee was surprised at seeing that he did not first wash before the dinner. But the Lord said to him, Now you Pharisees, you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, but the inside of you is full of plunder and wickedness. Unreasonable persons he that made the outside made also the inside, did he not? Nevertheless, give as gifts of mercy the things that are inside. And look, all other things are clean about you. But woe to you, Pharisees, 
because you give the tenth of the mint and the rue and of every other vegetable, but you pass by the justice and the love of God. These things you were under obligation to do, but those other things not to omit. Woe to you, Pharisees, because you love the front seats in the synagogues and the greetings in the marketplaces. Woe to you, because you are as those memorial tombs which are not in evidence, so that men walk upon them and do not know it. In answer, a certain one of those versed in the law said to him, Teacher, in saying these things, you also insult us. And he said, Woe also to you who are versed in the law, because you load men with loads hard to be borne, but you yourselves do not touch the loads with one of your fingers. Woe to you, because you build the memorial tombs of the prophets, but your forefathers killed them. Certainly you are witnesses of the deeds of your forefathers, and yet you give consent to them, because these killed the prophets, but you are building their tombs. On this account the wisdom of God also said, I will send forth to them prophets and apostles, and they will kill and persecute some of them, so that the blood of all the prophets spilled from the founding of the world may be required from this generation. From the blood of Abel down to the blood of Zechariah, who was slain between the altar and the house. Yes, I tell you, it will be required from this generation. Woe to you who are versed in the law, because you took away the key of knowledge. You yourselves did not go in, and those going in you hindered. So when he went out from there, the scribes and the Pharisees started in to press upon him terribly, and to ply him with questions about further things, lying in wait for him to catch something out of his mouth. Chapter 12 In the meantime, when the crowd had gathered together in so many thousands that they were stepping upon one another, he started out by saying first to his disciples, Watch out for the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. But there is nothing carefully concealed that will not be revealed, and secret that will not become known. Wherefore, what things you say in the darkness will be heard in the light, and what you whisper in private rooms will be preached from the housetops. Moreover, I say to you, my friends, do not fear those who killed the body, and after this are not able to do anything more. But I will indicate to you whom to fear. Fear him who after killing has authority to throw into Gehenna, Yes, I tell you, fear this one. Five sparrows sell for two coins of small value, do they not? Yet not one of them goes forgotten before God. But even the hairs of your heads are all numbered. Have no fear, you are worth more than many sparrows. I say then to you, Everyone that confesses union with me before men, the Son of Man will also confess union with him before the angels of God. But he that disowns me before men will be disowned before the angels of God. And everyone that says a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But he that blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven it. But when they bring you in before public assemblies and government officials and authorities, do not become anxious about how or what you will speak in defense or what you will say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour the things you ought to say. Then a certain one of the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. He said to him, Man, who appointed me judge or apportioner over you persons? Then he said to them, Keep your eyes open, 
and guard against every sort of covetousness. Because even when a person has an abundance, his life does not result from the things he possesses. With that, he spoke an illustration to them, saying, The land of a certain rich man produced well. Consequently, he began reasoning within himself, saying, What shall I do now that I have nowhere to gather my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will tear down my storehouses and build bigger ones. And there I will gather all my grain and all my good things. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many good things laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, enjoy yourself. But God said to him, Unreasonable one, this night they are demanding your soul from you. Who, then, is to have the things you stored up? So it goes with the man that lays up treasure for himself, but is not rich toward God. Then he said to his disciples, On this account I say to you, Quit being anxious about your souls, as to what you will eat, or about your bodies, as to what you will wear. For the soul is worth more than food, and the body than clothing. Mark well that the ravens neither sow seed nor reap, and they have neither barn nor storehouse, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more worth are you than birds? Who of you, by being anxious, can add a cubit to his lifespan? If, therefore, you cannot do the least thing, why be anxious about the remaining things? Mark well how the lilies grow. They neither toil nor spin. But I tell you, not even Solomon in all his glory was arrayed as one of these. If now God thus clothes the vegetation in the field that today exists and tomorrow is cast into an oven, how much rather will he clothe you you with little faith. So quit seeking what you might eat and what you might drink, and quit being in anxious suspense. For all these are the things the nations of the world are eagerly pursuing. But your Father knows you need these things. Nevertheless, seek continually His kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Have no fear, little flock because your Father has approved of giving you the kingdom. Sell the things belonging to you and give gifts of mercy. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, a never-failing treasure in the heavens, where a thief does not get near, nor moth consumes. For where your treasure is, there your hearts will be also. Let your loins be girded and your lamps be burning. And you yourselves be like men waiting for their master when he returns from the marriage, so that at his arriving and knocking they may at once open to him. Happy are those slaves whom the master on arriving finds watching. Truly I say to you, he will gird himself and make them recline at the table, and will come alongside and minister to them. And if he arrives in the second watch, even if in the third, and finds them thus, happy are they. But know this, that if the householder had known at what hour the thief would come, he would have kept watching, and not have let his house be broken into. You also keep ready, because at an hour that you do not think likely, the Son of Man is coming. Then Peter said, Lord, are you saying this illustration to us, or also to all? And the Lord said, Who really is the faithful steward, the discreet one whom his master will appoint over his body of attendants, to keep giving them their measure of food supplies at the proper time? Happy is that slave if his master on arriving finds him doing so. I tell you truthfully, he will appoint him over all his belongings. 
But if ever that slave should say in his heart, My master delays coming, and should start to beat the men servants and the maid servants, and to eat and drink and get drunk, the master of that slave will come on a day that he is not expecting him, and in an hour that he does not know, and he will punish him with the greatest severity, and assign him a part with the unfaithful ones. Then that slave that understood the will of his master, but did not get ready, or do in line with his will, will be beaten with many strokes. But the one that did not understand, and so did things deserving of strokes, will be beaten with few. Indeed, every one to whom much was given, much will be demanded of him, and the one whom people put in charge of much, they will demand more than usual of him. I came to start a fire on the earth, and what more is there for me to wish if it has already been lighted? Indeed, I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and how I am being distressed until it is finished. Do you imagine I came to give peace on the earth? No, indeed, I tell you, but rather division. For from now on there will be five in one house divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against her mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Then he went on to say also to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in western parts, at once you say, A storm is coming, and it turns out so. And when you see that a south wind is blowing, you say, There will be a heat wave, and it occurs. Hypocrites! You know how to examine the outward appearance of earth and sky, but how is it you do not know how to examine this particular time? Why do you not judge also for yourselves what is righteous? For example, when you are going with your adversary at law to a ruler, get to work while on the way to rid yourself of the dispute with him, that he may never hail you before the judge, and the judge deliver you to the court officer, and the court officer throw you into prison. I tell you, you will certainly not get out from there until you pay over the last small coin of very little value. Chapter 13 At that very season, there were certain ones present that reported to him about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. So in reply he said to them, Do you imagine that these Galileans were proved worse sinners than all other Galileans because they have suffered these things? No, indeed, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all likewise be destroyed. For those eighteen upon whom the tower in Siloam fell, thereby killing them, do you imagine that they were proved greater debtors than all other men inhabiting Jerusalem? No, indeed, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all be destroyed in the same way. Then he went on to tell this illustration. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it, but found none. Then he said to the vine dresser. Here it is three years that I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, but have found none. Cut it down. Why really should it keep the ground useless? In reply he said to him, Master, let it alone also this year, until I dig around it and put on manure. And if then it produces fruit in the future, well and good. But if not, you shall cut it down. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And look, a woman with a spirit of weakness for eighteen years, and she was bent double, and was unable to raise herself up at all. When he saw her, Jesus addressed her and said to her, Woman, 
you are released from your weakness. And he laid his hands on her, and instantly she straightened up and began to glorify God. But in response, the presiding officer of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus did the cure on the Sabbath, began to say to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. On them, therefore, come and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. However, the Lord answered him and said, Hypocrites! Does not each one of you on the Sabbath untie his bull or his ass from the stall and lead it away to give it drink? Was it not due, then, for this woman who is a daughter of Abraham and whom Satan held bound, look eighteen years to be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? Well, when he said these things, all his opposers began to feel shame. But all the crowd began to rejoice at all the glorious things done by him. Therefore he went on to say, What is the kingdom of God like? And with what shall I compare it? It is like a mustard grain that a man took and put in his garden, and it grew and became a tree, and the birds of heaven took up lodging in its branches. And again he said, With what shall I compare the kingdom of God? It is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three large measures of flour, until the whole mass was fermented. And he journeyed through from city to city and from village to village, teaching and continuing on his journey to Jerusalem. Now a certain man said to him, Lord, are those who are being saved few? He said to them, Exert yourselves vigorously to get in through the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will seek to get in, but will not be able. When once the householder has got up and locked the door, and you start to stand outside and to knock at the door, saying, Sir, open to us, but in answer he will say to you, I do not know where you are from. Then you will start saying, We ate and drank in front of you, and you taught in our broad ways. But he will speak and say to you, I do not know where you are from. Get away from me, all you workers of unrighteousness. There is where you're weeping and the gnashing of your teeth will be, when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but yourselves thrown outside. Furthermore, people will come from eastern parts and western, and from north and south, and will recline at the table in the kingdom of God. And look, there are those last who will be first, and there are those first who will be last. In that very hour certain Pharisees came up, saying to him, Get out, and be on your way from here, because Herod wants to kill you. And he said to them, Go and tell that fox, Look, I am casting out demons and accomplishing healing today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be finished. Nevertheless, I must go on my way today and tomorrow and the following day because it is not admissible for a prophet to be destroyed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the killer of the prophets and stoner of those sent forth to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together in the manner that a hen gathers her brood of chicks under her wings. But you people did not want it. Look, your house is abandoned to you. I tell you, you will by no means see me until you say, Blessed is he that comes in Jehovah's name. Chapter 14 And on an occasion when he went into the house of a certain one of the rulers of the Pharisees on the Sabbath to eat a meal, they were closely watching him. 
and look, there was before him a certain man who had dropsy. So in response, Jesus spoke to those versed in the law and to the Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful on the Sabbath to cure or not? But they kept silent. With that, he took hold of the man, healed him, and sent him away. And he said to them, Who of you, if his son or bull falls into a well, will not immediately pull him out on the Sabbath day? And they were not able to answer back on these things. He then went on to tell the invited men an illustration as he marked how they were choosing the most prominent places for themselves, saying to them, When you are invited by someone to a marriage feast, do not lie down in the most prominent place. Perhaps someone more distinguished than you may at the time have been invited by him, and he that invited you and him will come and say to you, Let this man have the place and then you will start off with shame to occupy the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and recline in the lowest place, that when the man that has invited you comes, he will say to you, Friend, go on up higher. Then you will have honor in front of all your fellow guests. For everyone that exalts himself will be humbled, and he that humbles himself will be exalted. Next he proceeded to say also to the man that invited him, When you spread a dinner or evening meal, do not call your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors. Perhaps sometime they might also invite you in return, and it would become a repayment to you. But when you spread a feast, invite poor people, crippled, lame, blind, and you will be happy, because they have nothing with which to repay you. For you will be repaid in the resurrection of the righteous ones. On hearing these things, a certain one of the fellow guests said to him, Happy is he who eats bread in the kingdom of God. Jesus said to him, a certain man was spreading a grand evening meal, and he invited many. And he sent his slave out at the hour of the evening meal to say to the invited ones, Come, because things are now ready. But they all in common started to beg off. The first said to him, I bought a field and need to go out and see it. I ask you, have me excused. And another said, I bought five yoke of cattle, and am going to examine them. I ask you, have me excused. Still another said, I just married a wife, and for this reason I cannot come. So the slave came up and reported these things to his master. Then the householder became wrathful, and said to his slave, Go out quickly into the broad ways and the lanes of a city, and bring in here the poor and crippled and blind and lame. In time the slave said, Master, what you ordered has been done, and yet there is room. And the master said to the slave, Go out into the roads and the fenced-in places, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say to you people, none of those men that were invited shall have a taste of my evening meal. Now great crowds were traveling with him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own soul, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever is not carrying his torture stake and coming after me cannot be my disciple. For example, who of you that wants to build a tower does not first sit down and calculate the expense, 
to see if he has enough to complete it. Otherwise, he might lay its foundation but not be able to finish it, and all the onlookers might start to ridicule him, saying, This man started to build, but was not able to finish. Or what king, marching to meet another king in war, does not first sit down and take counsel, whether he is able with ten thousand troops, to cope with the one that comes against him with twenty thousand? If, in fact, he cannot do so, then while that one is yet far away, he sends out a body of ambassadors and sues for peace. Thus you may be sure, none of you that does not say goodbye to all his belongings can be my disciple. Salt, to be sure, is fine. But if even the salt loses its strength, with what will it be seasoned? It is suitable neither for soil nor for manure. People throw it outside. Let him that has ears to listen, listen. Chapter 15 Now all the tax collectors and the sinners kept drawing near to him to hear him. Consequently, both the Pharisees and the scribes kept muttering, saying, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then he spoke this illustration to them, saying, What man of you with a hundred sheep, on losing one of them, will not leave the ninety-nine behind in the wilderness and go for the lost one until he finds it? And when he has found it, he puts it upon his shoulders and rejoices. And when he gets home, he calls his friends and his neighbors together, saying to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my sheep that was lost. I tell you that thus there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner that repents than over ninety-nine righteous ones who have no need of repentance. Or what woman with ten drachma coins, if she loses one drachma coin, does not light a lamp and sweep her house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls the women who are her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, because I have found the drachma coin that I lost. Thus I tell you, joy arises among the angels of God over one sinner that repents. Then he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the part of the property that falls to my share. Then he divided his means of living to them. Later, after not many days, the younger son gathered all things together and traveled abroad into a distant country, and there squandered his property by living a debauched life. When he had spent everything, a severe famine occurred throughout that country, and he started to be in need. He even went and attached himself to one of the citizens of that country, and he sent him into his fields to herd swine. And he used to desire to be filled with the carob pods, which the swine were eating, and no one would give him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many hired men of my father are abounding with bread, while I am perishing here from famine? I will rise and journey to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Make me as one of your hired men. So he rose and went to his father. While he was yet a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was moved with pity, and he ran and fell upon his neck and tenderly kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Make me as one of your hired men. But the father said to his slaves, Quick, 
bring out a robe, the best one, and clothe him with it, and put a ring on his hand, and sandals on his feet. And bring the fattened young bull, slaughter it, and let us eat and enjoy ourselves. Because this my son was dead and came to life again. He was lost and was found. And they started to enjoy themselves. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and got near the house, he heard a music concert and dancing. So he called one of the servants to him and inquired what these things meant. He said to him, Your brother has come, and your father slaughtered the fattened young bull, because he got him back in good health. But he became wrathful and was unwilling to go in. Then his father came out and began to entreat him. In reply he said to his father, Here it is so many years I have slaved for you, and never once did I transgress your commandment, and yet to me you never once gave a kid for me to enjoy myself with my friends. But as soon as this your son who ate up your means of living with harlots arrived, you slaughtered the fattened young bull for him. And he said to him, Child, you have always been with me, and all the things that are mine are yours. But we just had to enjoy ourselves and rejoice, because this your brother was dead and came to life, and he was lost and was found. Chapter 16 Then he went on to say also to the disciples, A certain man was rich, and he had a steward, and this one was accused to him as handling his goods wastefully. So he called him and said to him, What is this I hear about you? Hand in the account of your stewardship, for you can no longer manage the house. And the steward said to himself, What am I to do, seeing that my master will take the stewardship away from me? I am not strong enough to dig. I am ashamed to beg. Ah, I know what I shall do, so that when I am put out of the stewardship, people will receive me into their homes. And calling to him each one of the debtors of his master, he proceeded to say to the first, how much are you owing, my master? He said, A hundred bath measures of olive oil. He said to him, Take your written agreement back and sit down and quickly write fifty. Next, he said to another one, Now you, how much are you owing? He said, A hundred core measures of wheat. He said to him, Take your written agreement back and write eighty. And his master commended the steward, though unrighteous, because he acted with practical wisdom. For the sons of this system of things are wiser in a practical way toward their own generation than the sons of the light are. Also, I say to you, make friends for yourselves by means of the unrighteous riches, so that, when such fail, they may receive you into the everlasting dwelling places. The person faithful in what is least is faithful also in much, and the person unrighteous in what is least is unrighteous also in much. Therefore, if you have not proved yourselves faithful in connection with the unrighteous riches, who will entrust you with what is true? And if you have not proved yourselves faithful in connection with what is another's, who will give you what is for yourselves? No house servant can be a slave to two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will stick to the one and despise the other. You cannot be slaves to God and to riches. Now the Pharisees, who were money lovers, were listening to all these things, and they began to sneer at him. Consequently, he said to them, you are those who declare yourselves righteous before men, but God knows your hearts. 
because what is lofty among men is a disgusting thing in God's sight. The law and the prophets were until John. From then on, the kingdom of God is being declared as good news, and every sort of person is pressing forward toward it. Indeed, it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one particle of a letter of the law to go unfulfilled. Every one that divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery, and he that marries a woman divorced from a husband commits adultery. But a certain man was rich, and he used to deck himself with purple and linen, enjoying himself from day to day with magnificence. But a certain beggar named Lazarus used to be put at his gate, full of ulcers, and desiring to be filled with the things dropping from the table of the rich man. Yes, too, the dogs would come and lick his ulcers. Now in course of time the beggar died, and he was carried off by the angels to the bosom position of Abraham. Also, the rich man died and was buried. And in Hades he lifted up his eyes, he existing in torments, and he saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in the bosom position with him. So he called and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, because I am in anguish in this blazing fire. But Abraham said, Child, remember that you received in full your good things in your lifetime, but Lazarus correspondingly the injurious things. Now, however, he is having comfort here, but you are in anguish. And besides all these things, a great chasm has been fixed between us and you people, so that those wanting to go over from here to you people cannot. Neither may people cross over from there to us. Then he said, In that event I ask you, Father, to send him to the house of my father, for I have five brothers, in order that he may give them a thorough witness, that they also should not get into this place of torment. But Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to these. Then he said, No, indeed, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. But he said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone rises from the dead. Chapter 17 then he said to his disciples, It is unavoidable that causes for stumbling should come. Nevertheless, woe to the one through whom they come. It would be of more advantage to him if a millstone were suspended from his neck and he were thrown into the sea than for him to stumble one of these little ones. Pay attention to yourselves. If your brother commits a sin, give him a rebuke. And if he repents, forgive him. Even if he sins seven times a day against you, and he comes back to you seven times, saying, I repent, you must forgive him. Now the apostles said to the Lord, Give us more faith. Then the Lord said, If you had faith the size of a mustard grain, you would say to this black mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who of you is there that has a slave plowing or minding the flock, who will say to him when he gets in from the field, Come here at once and recline at the table? Rather, will he not say to him, Get something ready for me to have my evening meal, and put on an apron and minister to me until I am through eating and drinking, and afterward you can eat and drink. 
He will not feel gratitude to the slave because he did the things assigned, will he? So you also, when you have done all the things assigned to you, say, We are good for nothing slaves. What we have done is what we ought to have done. And while he was going to Jerusalem, he was passing through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he was entering into a certain village, ten leprous men met him, but they stood up afar off. And they raised their voices and said, Jesus, instructor, have mercy on us. And when he got sight of them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they were going off, their cleansing occurred. One of them, when he saw he was healed, turned back, glorifying God with a loud voice. And he fell upon his face at Jesus' feet, thanking him. Furthermore, he was a Samaritan. In reply, Jesus said, The ten were cleansed, were they not? Where then are the other nine? Were none found that turned back to give glory to God, but this man of another nation? And he said to him, Rise and be on your way. Your faith has made you well. But on being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God was coming, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God is not coming with striking observableness. Neither will people be saying, See here or there. For look, the kingdom of God is in your midst. Then he said to the disciples, Days will come when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. And people will say to you, See there, or See here. Do not go out or chase after them. For even as the lightning by its flashing shines from one part under heaven to another part under heaven, so the Son of Man will be. First, however, he must undergo many sufferings and be rejected by this generation. Moreover, just as it occurred in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating, they were drinking, men were marrying, women were being given in marriage, until that day when Noah entered into the ark, and the flood arrived and destroyed them all. Likewise, just as it occurred in the days of Lot, they were eating, they were drinking, they were buying, they were selling, they were planting, they were building. But on the day that Lot came out of Sodom, it rained fire and sulfur from heaven and destroyed them all. The same way it will be on that day when the Son of Man is to be revealed. On that day, let the person that is on the housetop, but whose movable things are in the house, not come down to pick these up. And the person out in the field, let him likewise not return to the things behind. Remember the wife of Lot. Whoever seeks to keep his soul safe for himself will lose it. But whoever loses it will preserve it alive. I tell you, in that night two men will be in one bed. The one will be taken along but the other will be abandoned. There will be two women grinding at the same mill. The one will be taken along, but the other will be abandoned. So in response, they said to him, Where, Lord? He said to them, Where the body is, there also the eagles will be gathered together. Chapter 18 Then he went on to tell them an illustration with regard to the need for them always to pray and not to give up, saying, In a certain city there was a certain judge 
that had no fear of God and had no respect for man. But there was a widow in that city, and she kept going to him, saying, See that I get justice from my adversary at law. Well, for a while he was unwilling, but afterward he said to himself, Although I do not fear God or respect a man, at any rate, because of this widow's continually making me trouble, I will see that she gets justice, so that she will not keep coming and pummeling me to a finish. And the Lord said, Hear what the judge, although unrighteous, said. Certainly, then, shall not God cause justice to be done for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night, even though he is long-suffering toward them? I tell you, he will cause justice to be done to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man arrives, will he really find the faith on the earth? But he spoke this illustration also to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and who considered the rest as nothing. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and began to pray these things to himself. O oh God, I thank you I am not as the rest of men, extortioners, unrighteous, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give the tenth of all things I acquire. But the tax collector, standing at a distance, was not willing even to raise his eyes heavenward, but kept beating his breast, saying, O oh God, be gracious to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home proved more righteous than that man, because everyone that exalts himself will be humiliated, but he that humbles himself will be exalted. Now people began to bring him also their infants for him to touch these, but on seeing it the disciples began to reprimand them. However, Jesus called the infants to him, saying, Let the young children come to me, and do not try to stop them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such like ones. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a young child will by no means get into it. And a certain ruler questioned him, saying, Good teacher, by doing what shall I inherit everlasting life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? Nobody is good except one, God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. Then he said, all these I have kept from youth on. After hearing that, Jesus said to him, There is yet one thing lacking about you. Sell all the things you have and distribute to poor people, and you will have treasure in the heavens, and come be my follower. When he heard this, he became deeply grieved, for he was very rich. Jesus looked at him and said, How difficult a thing it will be for those having money to make their way into the kingdom of God. It is easier, in fact, for a camel to get through the eye of a sewing needle than for a rich man to get into the kingdom of God. Those who heard this said, Who possibly can be saved? He said, The things impossible with men are possible with God. But Peter said, Look, we have left our own things and followed you. He said to them, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God 
who will not in any way get many times more in this period of time and in the coming system of things everlasting life. Then he took the twelve aside and said to them, Look, we are going up to Jerusalem, and all the things written by means of the prophets as to the Son of Man will be completed. For instance, he will be delivered up to men of the nations, and will be made fun of, and be treated insolently, and spit upon. And after scourging him, they will kill him. But on the third day, he will rise. However, they did not get the meaning of any of these things, but this utterance was hidden from them, and they were not knowing the things said. Now as he was getting near to Jericho, a certain blind man was sitting beside the road begging. Because he heard a crowd moving through, he began to inquire what this might mean. They reported to him, Jesus the Nazarene is passing by. At that he cried out, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And those going in advance began to tell him sternly to keep quiet. But that much more he kept shouting, Son of David, have mercy on me. Then Jesus stood still and commanded the man to be led to him. After he got near, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, let me recover sight. So Jesus said to him, Recover your sight. Your faith has made you well. And instantly he recovered sight, and he began to follow him, glorifying God. Also all the people at seeing it gave praise to God. Chapter 19 And he entered Jericho, and was going through. Now here there was a man called by the name Zacchaeus, and he was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. Well, he was seeking to see who this Jesus was, but he could not for the crowd, because he was small in size. So he ran ahead to an advanced position, and climbed a fig mulberry tree in order to see him, because he was about to go through that way. Now when Jesus got to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and get down, for today I must stay in your house. With that he hurried and got down, and with rejoicing he received him as guest. But when they saw it, they all fell to muttering, saying, With a man that is a sinner he went in to lodge. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, the half of my belongings, Lord, I am giving to the poor, and whatever I extorted from anyone by false accusation, I am restoring fourfold. At this Jesus said to him, this day salvation has come to this house, because he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. While they were listening to these things, he spoke in addition and illustration, because he was near Jerusalem, and they were imagining that the kingdom of God was going to display itself instantly. Therefore he said, a certain man of noble birth traveled to a distant land to secure kingly power for himself and to return. Calling ten slaves of his, he gave them ten minas and told them, Do business till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent out a body of ambassadors after him to say, We do not want this man to become king over us. Eventually, when he got back after having secured the kingly power, he commanded to be called to him these slaves to whom he had given the silver money, in order to ascertain what they had gained by business activity. 
Then the first one presented himself, saying, Lord, your mina gained ten minas. So he said to him, Well done, good slave, because in a very small matter you have proved yourself faithful. Hold authority over ten cities. Now the second came, saying, Your mina, Lord, made five minas. He said to this one also, You too be in charge of five cities. But a different one came, saying, Lord, here is your mina that I kept laid away in a cloth. You see, I was in fear of you, because you are a harsh man. You take up what you did not deposit, and you reap what you did not sow. He said to him, Out of your own mouth I judge you, wicked slave. You knew, did you, that I am a harsh man, taking up what I did not deposit, and reaping what I did not sow? Hence, why is it you did not put my silver money in a bank? Then on my arrival, I would have collected it with interest. With that he said to those standing by, Take the mina from him, and give it to him that has the ten minas. But they said to him, Lord, he has ten minas. I say to you, to every one that has, more will be given. But from the one that does not have, even what he has will be taken away. Moreover, these enemies of mine that did not want me to become king over them, bring here and slaughter them before me. So after he had said these things, he began to go on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. And when he got near to Bethphage and Bethany, at the mountain called Mount of Olives, he sent forth two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village that is within sight of you, and in it, after you pass in, you will find a colt tied, on which none of mankind ever set. Loose it and bring it. But if anyone asks you, Why is it you are loosing it? You must speak in this way. The Lord needs it. So those who were sent forth departed, and found it just as he said to them. But as they were loosing the colt, the owners of it said to them, Why are you loosing the colt? They said, The Lord needs it. And they led it to Jesus, and they threw their outer garments upon the colt, and set Jesus upon it. As he moved along, they kept spreading their outer garments on the road. As soon as he got near the road down the Mount of Olives, all the multitude of the disciples started to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice concerning all the powerful works they had seen, saying, Blessed is the one coming as the King in Jehovah's name. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest places. However, some of the Pharisees from the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But in reply he said, I tell you, if these remain silent, the stones would cry out. And when he got nearby, he viewed the city and wept over it, saying, If you even you had discerned in this day the things having to do with peace, but now they have been hid from your eyes. Because the days will come upon you when your enemies will build around you a fortification with pointed stakes, and will encircle you and distress you from every side. And they will dash you and your children within you to the ground, and they will not leave a stone upon a stone in you because you did not discern the time of your being inspected. And he entered into the temple and started to throw out those who were selling, saying to them, It is written, and my house will be a house of prayer. But you made it a cave of robbers. Furthermore, he went teaching daily in the temple. 
But the chief priests and the scribes and the principal ones of the people were seeking to destroy him, and yet they did not find the effective thing for them to do. For the people, one and all, kept hanging on to him to hear him. Chapter 20 On one of the days while he was teaching the people in the temple and declaring the good news, the chief priests and the scribes with the older men came near, and they spoke up, saying to him, Tell us, by what authority you do these things, or who it is that gave you this authority? In reply he said to them, I will also ask you a question. And you tell me, was the baptism of John from heaven or from men? Then among themselves they drew conclusions, saying, If we say, from heaven, he will say, Why is it you did not believe him? But if we say, from men, the people one and all will stone us, for they are persuaded that John was a prophet. So they replied that they did not know its source. And Jesus said to them, Neither am I telling you by what authority I do these things. Then he started to tell the people this illustration. A man planted a vineyard and let it out to cultivators, and he traveled abroad for a considerable time. But in due season he sent out a slave to the cultivators, that they might give him some of the fruit of the vineyard. The cultivators, however, sent him away empty after beating him up. But he repeated and sent them a different slave. That one also they beat up and dishonored and sent away empty. Yet again he sent a third. This one also they wounded and threw out. At this the owner of the vineyard said, what shall I do? I will send my son, the Beloved. Likely they will respect this one. When the cultivators caught sight of him, they went reasoning with one another, saying, This is the heir. Let us kill him, that the inheritance may become ours. With that they threw him outside the vineyard and killed him. What, therefore, Will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and destroy these cultivators, and will give the vineyard to others. On hearing this, they said, Never may that happen. But he looked upon them and said, What then does this that is written mean? The stone which the builders rejected, this has become the chief cornerstone. Every one falling upon that stone will be shattered. As for any one upon whom it falls, it will pulverize him. The scribes and the chief priests now sought to get their hands on him in that very hour. But they feared the people, for they perceived that he spoke this illustration with them in mind. And after observing him closely, they sent out men secretly hired to pretend that they were righteous, in order that they might catch him in speech, so as to turn him over to the government and to the authority of the governor. And they questioned him, saying, Teacher, we know you speak and teach correctly and show no partiality, but you teach the way of God in line with truth. Is it lawful for us to pay tax to Caesar or not? But he detected their cunning, and said to them, Show me a denarius. Whose image and inscription does it have? They said, Caesar's. He said to them, By all means, then, pay back Caesar's things to Caesar, but God's things to God. Well, they were not able to catch him in this saying before the people, but in amazement at his answer, they said nothing. However, some of the Sadducees, those who say there is no resurrection, 
came up and questioned him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote us, If a man's brother dies having a wife, but this one remained childless, his brother should take the wife and raise up offspring from her for his brother. Accordingly, there were seven brothers, and the first took a wife and died childless. So the second and the third took her. Likewise, even the seven, they did not leave children behind, but died off. Lastly, the woman also died. Consequently, in the resurrection, of which one of them does she become the wife? For the seven got her as wife. Jesus said to them, The children of this system of things marry and are given in marriage. But those who have been counted worthy of gaining that system of things and the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. In fact, neither can they die any more, for they are like the angels, and they are God's children by being children of the resurrection. But that the dead are raised up even Moses disclosed, in the account about the thorn bush, when he calls Jehovah the God of Abraham, and God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. He is a God, not of the dead, but of the living, for they are all living to him. In response, some of the scribes said, Teacher, you spoke well. For no longer did they have the courage to ask him a single question. In turn, he said to them, How is it they say that the Christ is David's son? For David himself says in the book of Psalms, Jehovah said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I place your enemies as a stool for your feet. David, therefore, calls him Lord. So how is he his son? Then while all the people were listening, he said to the disciples, Look out for the scribes who desire to walk around in robes and like greetings in the marketplaces and front seats in the synagogues and most prominent places at evening meals and who devour the houses of the widows, and for a pretext, make long prayers. These will receive a heavier judgment. Chapter 21 Now as he looked up, he saw the rich dropping their gifts into the treasury chests. Then he saw a certain needy widow drop two small coins of very little value there. And he said, I tell you truthfully, this widow, although poor, dropped in more than they all did. For all these dropped in gifts out of their surplus. But this woman out of her want dropped in all the means of living she had. Later, as certain ones were speaking concerning the temple, how it was adorned with fine stones and dedicated things, he said, As for these things that you are beholding, the days will come in which not a stone upon a stone will be left here and not be thrown down. Then they questioned him, saying, Teacher, when will these things actually be? And what will be the sign when these things are destined to occur? He said, Look out that you are not misled, for many will come on the basis of my name, saying, I am he, and the due time has approached. Do not go after them. Furthermore, when you hear of wars and disorders, do not be terrified. For these things must occur first, but the end does not occur immediately. Then he went on to say to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be great earthquakes, and in one place after another pestilences and food shortages, and there will be fearful sights, and from heaven great signs. But before all these things, People will lay their hands upon you and persecute you, 
delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons, you being hailed before kings and governors for the sake of my name. It will turn out to you for a witness. Therefore, settle it in your hearts not to rehearse beforehand how to make your defense. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your opposers together will not be able to resist or dispute. Moreover, you will be delivered up even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death, and you will be objects of hatred by all people because of my name. And yet, not a hair of your heads will by any means perish. By endurance on your part, you will acquire your souls. Furthermore, when you see Jerusalem surrounded by encamped armies, then know that the desolating of her has drawn near. Then let those in Judea begin fleeing to the mountains, and let those in the midst of her withdraw, and let those in the country places not enter into her, because these are days for meeting out justice, that all the things written may be fulfilled. Woe to the pregnant women, and the one suckling a baby in those days. For there will be great necessity upon the land, and wrath on this people, and they will fall by the edge of the sword, and be led captive into all the nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled on by the nations, until the appointed times of the nations are fulfilled. Also, there will be signs in sun, and moon, and stars, and on the earth anguish of nations, not knowing the way out because of the roaring of the sea and its agitation, while men become faint out of fear and expectation of the things coming upon the inhabited earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But as these things start to occur, Raise yourselves erect and lift your heads up, because your deliverance is getting near. With that he spoke an illustration to them. Note the fig tree and all the other trees. When they are already in the bud, by observing it you know for yourselves that now the summer is near. In this way you also, when you see these things occurring, Know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away until all things occur. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But pay attention to yourselves, that your hearts never become weighed down with overeating and heavy drinking and anxieties of life and suddenly that day be instantly upon you as a snare. For it will come in upon all those dwelling upon the face of all the earth. Keep awake then, all the time making supplication, that you may succeed in escaping all these things that are destined to occur, and in standing before the Son of Man. So by day he would be teaching in the temple, but by night he would go out and lodge on the mountain called the Mount of Olives. And all the people would come early in the day to him in the temple to hear him. Chapter 22 Now the festival of the unfermented cakes, the so-called Passover, was getting near. Also the chief priests, and the scribes were seeking the effective way for them to get rid of him, for they were in fear of the people. But Satan entered into Judas, the one called Iscariot, who was numbered among the twelve. And he went off and talked with the chief priests and temple captains about the effective way to betray him to them. Well, they rejoiced and agreed to give him silver money. So he consented and he began to seek a good opportunity to betray him to them without a crowd around. The day of the unfermented cakes now arrived, on which the Passover victim must be sacrificed. And he dispatched Peter and John, saying, Go and get the Passover ready for us to eat. 
They said to him, Where do you want us to get it ready? He said to them, Look, when you enter into the city, a man carrying an earthenware vessel of water will meet you. Follow him into the house into which he enters. And you must say to the landlord of the house, The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room in which I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And that man will show you a large upper room furnished. Get it ready there. So they departed and found it just as he had said to them, and they got the Passover ready. At length, when the hour came, he reclined at the table, and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have greatly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it becomes fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And accepting a cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and pass it from one to the other among yourselves. For I tell you, from now on I will not drink again from the product of the vine until the kingdom of God arrives. Also he took a loaf, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This means my body, which is to be given in your behalf. Keep doing this in remembrance of me. Also the cup in the same way, after they had the evening meal, he sang, This cup means the new covenant by virtue of my blood, which is to be poured out in your behalf. But look, the hand of my betrayer is with me at the table, because the Son of Man is going his way according to what is marked out, all the same Woe to that man through whom he is betrayed. So they started to discuss among themselves the question of which of them would really be the one that was about to do this. However, there also arose a heated dispute among them over which one of them seemed to be greatest. But he said to them, The kings of the nations lorded over them and those having authority over them are called benefactors. You, though, are not to be that way. But let him that is the greatest among you become as the youngest, and the one acting as chief as the one ministering. For which one is greater, the one reclining at the table, or the one ministering? Is it not the one reclining at the table? but I am in your midst as the one ministering. However, you are the ones that have stuck with me in my trials, and I make a covenant with you, just as my Father has made a covenant with me for a kingdom, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones to judge the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, look! Satan has demanded to have you men to sift you as wheat. But I have made supplication for you, that your faith may not give out. And you, when once you have returned, strengthen your brothers. Then he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both into prison and into death. But he said, I tell you, Peter, a cock will not crow today, until you have three times denied knowing me. He also said to them, When I sent you forth without purse and food pouch and sandals, you did not want for anything, did you? They said, No. Then he said to them, But now let the one that has a purse take it up, likewise also a food pouch, and let the one having no sword sell his outer garment and buy one. For I tell you, that this which is written must be accomplished in me, namely. And he was reckoned with lawless ones. For that which concerns me is having an accomplishment. Then they said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He said to them, It is enough. 
On going out, he went as customarily to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples also followed him. Having come to the place, he said to them, Carry on prayer, that you do not enter into temptation. And he himself drew away from them about a stone's throw, and bent his knees and began to pray, saying, Father, if you wish, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, let not my will, but yours, take place. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. But getting into an agony, he continued praying more earnestly, and his sweat became as drops of blood falling to the ground. And he rose from prayer, went to the disciples, and found them slumbering from grief. And he said to them, why are you sleeping? Rise and carry on prayer, that you do not enter into temptation. While he was yet speaking, look, a crowd, and the man called Judas, one of the twelve, was going before them, and he approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, do you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? When those about him saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? A certain one of them even did strike the slave of the high priest and took off his right ear. But in reply, Jesus said, Let it go as far as this. And he touched the ear and healed him. Jesus then said to the chief priests, and captains of the temple, and older men that had come there for him. Did you come out with swords and clubs as against a robber? While I was with you in the temple day after day, you did not stretch out your hands against me. But this is your hour and the authority of darkness. Then they arrested him, and led him off, and brought him into the house of the high priest, but Peter was following at a distance. When they lit a fire in the midst of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter was sitting in among them. But a certain servant girl saw him sitting by the bright fire and looked him over and said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, I do not know him, woman. And after a short time, another person seeing him said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. And after about an hour intervened, a certain other man began insisting strongly, For a certainty this man also was with him, for in fact he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are saying. And instantly, while he was yet speaking, a cock crowed. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter recalled the utterance of the Lord when he said to him, Before a cock crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Now the men that had him in custody began to make fun of him, hitting him, and after covering him over, they would ask and say, Prophesy! Who is it that struck you? And they went on saying many other things in blasphemy against him. At length, when it became day, the assembly of older men of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together. And they hailed him into their Sanhedrin hall, saying, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he said to them, Even if I told you, you would not believe it at all. Moreover, if I questioned you, you would not answer at all. However, from now on, the Son of Man will be sitting at the powerful right hand of God. At this they all said, Are you therefore the Son of God? He said to them, You yourselves are saying that I am. They said, Why do we need further witness? 
for we ourselves have heard it out of his own mouth. Chapter 23 So the multitude of them rose, one and all, and led him to Pilate. Then they started to accuse him, saying, This man we found subverting our nation, and forbidding the paying of taxes to Caesar, and saying he himself is Christ a king. Now Pilate asked him the question, Are you the king of the Jews? In answer to him, he said, You yourself are saying it. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no crime in this man. But they began to be insistent, saying, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, even starting out from Galilee to here. On hearing that, Pilate asked, whether the man was a Galilean, and, after ascertaining that he was from the jurisdiction of Herod, he sent him on to Herod, who was also himself in Jerusalem in these days. When Herod saw Jesus, he rejoiced greatly. For over a considerable time he was wanting to see him because of having heard about him, and he was hoping to see some sign performed by him. He began to question him with a good many words, but he made him no answer. However, the chief priests and the scribes kept standing up and vehemently accusing him. Then Herod, together with his soldier guards, discredited him, and he made fun of him by clothing him with a bright garment and sent him back to Pilate. Both Herod and Pilate now became friends with each other on that very day, for before that they had continued at enmity between themselves. Pilate then called the chief priests and the rulers and the people together, and said to them, You brought this man to me as one inciting the people to revolt. And look, I examined him in front of you, but found in this man no ground for the charges you are bringing against him. In fact, neither did Herod for he sent him back to us. And look, nothing deserving of death has been committed by him. I will therefore chastise him and release him. But with their whole multitude they cried out, saying, Take this one away, but release Barabbas to us. Which man had been thrown into prison for a certain sedition occurring in the city and for murder. Again Pilate called out to them, because he wanted to release Jesus. Then they began to yell, saying, Impale! Impale him! The third time he said to them, Why? What bad thing did this man do? I found nothing deserving of death in him. I will therefore chastise and release him. At this they began to be urgent, with loud voices, demanding that he be impaled, and their voices began to win out. So Pilate gave sentence for their demand to be met. He released the man that had been thrown into prison for sedition and murder, and whom they were demanding, but he surrendered Jesus to their will. Now as they led him away, they laid hold of Simon, a certain native of Cyrene, coming from the country and they placed the torture stake upon him to bear it behind Jesus. But there was following him a great multitude of the people and of women who kept beating themselves in grief and bewailing him. Jesus turned to the women and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, stop weeping for me. On the contrary, weep for yourselves and for your children. Because, look, days are coming in which people will say, Happy are the barren women, and the wombs that did not give birth, and the breasts that did not nurse. Then they will start to say to the mountains, Fall over us, and to the hills, cover us over. 
because if they do these things when the tree is moist, what will occur when it is withered? But two other men, evildoers, were also being led to be executed with him. And when they got to the place called Skull, there they impaled him and the evildoers, one on his right and one on his left. But Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Furthermore, to distribute his garments, they cast lots. And the people stood looking on, but the rulers were sneering, saying, Others he saved, let him save himself, if this one is the Christ of God, the Chosen One. Even the soldiers made fun of him, coming close and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. But one of the hung evildoers began to say abusively to him, You are the Christ, are you not? Save yourself and us. In reply, the other rebuked him and said, Do you not fear God at all, now that you are in the same judgment? And we indeed justly so, for we are receiving in full what we deserve for things we did. But this man did nothing out of the way. And he went on to say, Jesus, remember me when you get into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. Well, by now it was about the sixth hour, and yet a darkness fell over all the earth until the ninth hour, because the sunlight failed. Then the curtain of the sanctuary was rent down the middle. And Jesus called with a loud voice and said, Father, into your hands I entrust my spirit. When he had said this, he expired. Because of seeing what occurred, the army officer began to glorify God, saying, Really, this man was righteous. And all the crowds that were gathered together there for this spectacle, when they beheld the things that occurred, began to return, beating their breasts. Moreover, all those acquainted with him were standing at a distance. Also women, who together had followed him from Galilee, were standing beholding these things. And look, a man named Joseph, who was a member of the council, a good and righteous man. This man had not voted in support of their design and action. He was from Arimathea, a city of the Judeans, and was waiting for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And he took it down and wrapped it up in fine linen, and he laid him in a tomb carved in the rock, in which no man had yet lain. Now it was the day of preparation, and the evening light of the Sabbath was approaching. But the women, who had come with him out of Galilee, followed along and took a look at the memorial tomb, and how his body was laid. And they went back to prepare spices and perfumed oils. But of course, they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. Chapter 24 On the first day of the week, however, they went very early to the tomb, bearing the spices they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the memorial tomb, and when they entered they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were in perplexity over this, look, two men in flashing clothing stood by them, as the women became frightened and kept their faces turned to the ground, the men said to them, Why are you looking for the living one among the dead? He is not here, but has been raised up. Recall how he spoke to you while he was yet in Galilee, 
saying that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be impaled, and yet on the third day rise. So they called his sayings to mind, and they returned from the memorial tomb, and reported all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. They were the Magdalene Mary, and Joanna, and Mary the mother of James. Also the rest of the women with them were telling the apostles these things. However, these sayings appeared as nonsense to them, and they would not believe the women. But Peter rose and ran to the memorial tomb, and stooping forward he beheld the bandages alone. So he went off, wondering within himself at what had occurred. But look, on that very day two of them were journeying to a village about seven miles distant from Jerusalem, and named Emmaus. And they were conversing with each other over all these things that had come about. Now as they were conversing and discussing, Jesus himself approached and began walking with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. He said to them, What are these matters that you are debating between yourselves as you walk along? And they stood still with sad faces. In answer, the one named Cleopas said to him, Are you dwelling as an alien by yourself in Jerusalem, and so do not know the things that have occurred in her in these days? And he said to them, What things? They said to him, The things concerning Jesus the Nazarene, who became a prophet powerful in work and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers handed him over to the sentence of death and impaled him. But we were hoping that this man was the one destined to deliver Israel. Yes, and besides all these things, this makes the third day since these things occurred. Moreover, certain women from among us also astonished us, because they had been early to the memorial tomb, but did not find his body, and they came saying they had also seen a supernatural sight of angels, who said he is alive. Further, some of those with us went off to the memorial tomb, and they found it so, just as the women had said, but they did not see him. So he said to them, O oh, senseless ones, and slow in heart to believe on all the things the prophet spoke! Was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things, and to enter into his glory? And commencing at Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them things pertaining to himself in all the scriptures. Finally they got close to the village where they were journeying, and he made as if he was journeying on farther. But they used pressure upon him, saying, Stay with us, because it is toward evening, and the day has already declined. With that he went in to stay with them. And as he was reclining with them at the meal, he took the loaf, blessed it, broke it, and began to hand it to them. At that their eyes were fully opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from them. And they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning as he was speaking to us on the road, as he was fully opening up the scriptures to us? And in that very hour they rose and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven, and those with them assembled together, saying, for a fact the Lord was raised up, and he appeared to Simon. Now they themselves related the events on the road, and how he became known to them by the breaking of the loaf. While they were speaking of these things, he himself stood in their midst and said to them, May you have peace. But because they were terrified, and had become frightened, they were imagining they beheld a spirit. So he said to them, Why are you troubled, and why is it doubts come up in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, 
that it is I myself. Feel me and see. Because a spirit does not have flesh and bones, just as you behold that I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. But while they were still not believing for sheer joy and were wondering, he said to them, Do you have something there to eat? And they handed him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it before their eyes. He now said to them, these are my words which I spoke to you while I was yet with you, that all the things written in the Law of Moses and in the Prophets and Psalms about me must be fulfilled. Then he opened up their minds fully to grasp the meaning of the Scriptures. And he said to them, In this way it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from among the dead on the third day, and on the basis of his name, repentance for forgiveness of sins would be preached in all the nations, starting out from Jerusalem. You are to be witnesses of these things. And look, I am sending forth upon you that which is promised by my Father. You, though, abide in the city until you become clothed with power from on high. But he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. As he was blessing them, he was parted from them and began to be borne up to heaven. And they did obeisance to him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God.